Hello everyone and welcome back to Make the Music and today I want to cover in the spirit of the Christmas season how do we get a vintage sort of Elvis Presley style vintage track what are some of the mixing and production techniques that we can utilize in our modern home studio to get a more vintage sound um, obviously the modern sounds great we all love a modern sound but for some reason when it comes around to Christmas time and holiday themed music um, we want more of that vintage sound. It's just what we're used to. There's just a vintage flavor to it. And so I'm going to explore how we can use a little different techniques, some different mixing ideas to get more of that vintage sound. Now, if you're interested, I have a guide called the Home Studio Toolbox. It outlines a bunch of free material that you can get to help you start mixing and making music in your home studio. All the material in that guide is free. And the guide is also 100% free if you click the link in the description. Anyways, let's get into the video here. So I have a track, I'm working on a cover that I'm going to release just for fun. I thought, why not? Let's work on some uh, Christmas material here. I always like putting out a few songs around Christmas time. I just think uh, it gets me in the spirit. But this is Santa Claus Comes to Town, uh, you know, com Comes Tonight by Elvis, or sort of my own cover here. Let me play you a portion of the track, and then I'm gonna go into some of the techniques to make your track sound a little more vintage, but not necessarily low quality. So here, I'm gonna do a quick playthrough. Okay, so that's, you kind of have an idea of what the mix is sounding like there. Let's go into my three top tips for getting that almost vintage sound to your recordings and mixes. And I think number one to help you get a more vintage sound is leave it more dynamic. And so, I mean, a couple things by that. So as we all know, I love bus compression. I love limiting on the mix bus. But when it comes to a vintage sounding mix, I'm okay with compressing a little less, limiting a little less. Let the dynamics come through. Let it breathe. It doesn't need to sound so squashed. Yes, we still want it loud. We still want it near commercial volume, but I'm willing to sort of dial it back a bit. I think when people put Christmas music on or they put it on their playlist, they're not expecting it to like hit them in their face like a modern hard rock mix or something like that. So let's look at what kind of master bus compression I'm doing here. You can see it's not that aggressive. I mean, this is the uh, climax of the song, if you want to say, uh, where most elements are in. I mean, early in the beginning, there's maybe a couple db of compression there so i'm not squashing it that bad and the limiting it's just to bring the track loudness up but i'm also not squashing the track too bad there Yeah, it's bringing the loudness up for sure, but it's not really squashing too much of that dynamics there. And this can apply across your entire track. Yes, I use compression, especially on the vocal, right? We do want quite a bit of compression on the vocal just to keep it up front. But overall, whatever amount of compression I normally do, I just dialed it back slightly to give every track more room to breathe and a little more feeling of that organic uh, you know, sense. Um, also on the master bus, I will add, I use some virtual channels and things like that across the entire mix, but more vintage style. The RC2 is a vintage style uh, console setting on the virtual mix rack. I also added the revival in there just to give it that warmth. I'll probably add a virtual tape machine right, right on the end there as well, just to help it give it that vintage flavor. And then I was a little more lax with my compression across the mix, except when I came to the vocal to give everything a little more chance to breathe. So that would be my first tip for that vintage sound. My second tip here is let the drums sit in the back a little bit. And so I use Superior Drummer. They have an amazing 50s kit. Let me just play through here what it sounds like. Right, it's almost got that really big band flavor, that, that classic vintage sound. Now, typically in a rock mix, metal mix, or even pop, or really in anything these days, the drums are super upfront. And that's a great sound, adds a lot of energy. But notice in this mix, they're kind of just chilling in the back and they're not playing super loud or anything. I didn't boost the velocities up like crazy. I was just like, hey, this is setting up a decent shuffle groove. Um, it doesn't need to be killer in your face. If I was mixing this maybe from a modern context, I might have them at this level. But it doesn't need to be there, right? It doesn't need to be front and center. And so I think that's a great tip for us there. And when it came to the drum processing, it was a lot of vintage consoles, adding glue, making it sound like it had vibe. That was kind of what my main goal was with the drums, just giving it some presence because the drums are a little more in the back, 
adding a little more top just to make sure they cut through. Same thing with the kick. Um, I got rid of super tops there to give it that vintage flavor. I got rid of like super, super top in the kick, but added more of that punch in the mid range with the kick to have it kind of come through there. And the snare, I think I added some top, took out some boxiness because the drums are a little more in the back. Similarly with the drums, the guitars are not ultra up front because for my third tip here is don't go crazy on the panning. Now, I do like panning. We do want the track to sound wide. We don't want it to sound too mono. But you know, with some more vintage recordings, it's a little more drum, vocal, center focused. And so I didn't go crazy panning every element right and left, giving this like giant, you know, sense of width or anything like that, like I would do in a modern mix. Notice I've got guitars pan right and left. But that's basically it. I mean, I have stereo string tracks. But they're not pan super wide left and right. And then I'll also get into the vocal production later. But if you leave your mix a little more mono sounding, a little less wide, you don't have crazy pan toms or anything like that, it's going to give the track a more of a vintage vibey feel. And it's because modern mixes are so wide, which I, like I said before, is a great sound that I employ, I would say, 99% of the time. But to get that vintage sound on this Christmas style track, I left everything kind of centered in mono. And then the fourth thing I want to get into here is vocal production. Don't overdo it on the vocal production. If it sounds like there's too many tons and tons of layers, it's not going to sound as vintagey. Now, I do have these backup vocals sort of trying to emulate a barbershop quartet thing. I didn't do my best here, but it sounds cool. Those are kind of just chilling in the background. But for the lead, there is one vocal, right? You can see there's a lot of comps there because you really do want that vocal up front and you want it to really uh, you know, be able to entertain the audience. But I don't have tons of harmonies and layers, which I've done videos, money videos on vocal production. And I usually employ lots of layers because vocal production, modern vocal production has lots of layers. But because you have one vocal, you need to nail that vocal performance. Look at the comps I have in this vocal. It's a lot. I did five or six takes trying to get the best takes together because that vocal is going to be up front. And then I use several layers of compression and limiting and DSing to make sure that vocal sounds great. It sounds up front because really the drums are not gonna be the center point. The wideness and excitement of the mix is not really gonna be the center point, but your vocal performance and the overall vibe of the tracks so that really needs to be locked in and there if you're going to be making this style of track. So for instance, the vocal is just really present throughout the whole thing. So you can just hear that that vocal sounds pretty present. And then I added a good amount of reverb to it to give it that vintage vibe. It's not going to be a super dry modern sound. So I think what I did with this track here is combine some modern techniques to still not make it sound like, I'm not trying to make it sound like exactly like it's from 1950, but give it a vibe of a sort of classic feel. And that's what I sort of did with this track. So those are my four tips to adding a more classic vibey feel to your track. Let me know, do you have any tips that you've utilized to help with that? Leave it in a comment down below. I'd really like to hear it um, and sort of you know, pick your brain for those ideas. But anyways, those are my tips there. You can pick up the free guide in the description box down below. Like and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. And anyways, I'll see you guys next time.